Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining with us for the second webinar of this week, celebrating Cybersecurity Awareness Month in October. And uh, we have a very special speaker today from CIC and Dr. Sakib Hakak. He's going to talk about, are you a non-technical professional? And how can you counter this information content? Let me introduce uh, Dr. Hakak. Dr. Hakak is an assistant professor at Canadian Institute for Cybersecurity, CIC, Faculty of Computer Science, University of New Brunswick. And before joining UNB, he worked as an assistant professor at the University of Northern British Columbia. His current research interests include cybersecurity, data mining, applications of AI, and emerging technologies. Over to you, Dr. Sakib. Thank you, Vindya, for the introduction. So, uh... Again, uh, good morning. Sorry, sorry, it's it's good afternoon, I think. So yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about are you a non-technical professional? How can you counter disinformation content? <clears throat> and here is the outline of my talk. I will start with the definition of disinformation. How is this content created? And of course, what we can do to reduce the reduce its impact. So before I can start my presentation, I would like to ask a simple question maybe to the audience. Uh, can anyone define what is disinformation? I will pause for a few seconds if anyone has any ideas. <clears throat> no? Well, seems no responses. Uh, when it comes to the disinformation or misinformation, well, we can say it's it's basically a deceptive content, right? But again, when we talk about the deceptive content, uh, there are different there are different ways through which we can spread this deceptive content. For example, we can spread it through advertising, through government propaganda, through doctorate photographs, through policy documents, through fake websites, Wikipedia entries. I mean, there are endless, you know, uh, venues through which we can spread this uh, deceptive content. But there are two scenarios. One is we can share this uh, deceptive content either through accident or it can be intentional, right? And it's where, uh, like, it's how we can define the boundaries between disinformation and misinformation. So whenever a person shares some deceptive content by mistake or by accident, we can say that is basically misinformation. Why? Because that person was not sure whether this content is fake or real. But when a person shares the information with the intent or with the intention to, to create you know, a chaos or maybe manipulate users or to deceive users, we can say that, well, then it is disinformation. So again, misinformation is something that someone shares when he or she is not aware of that content. But disinformation is mainly, you know that this content is, is fake, but you still share it. Why? Because you have some malicious uh, agenda to deceive users or to create confusion among the people. Now, let me give a simple example. So here we have two different news articles. One appears it's from BBC News and the other appears it's from New York Times. So again, uh, I will give a pause of a few seconds. Can anyone tell me which, like, is this news article a fake or real? Is this news article be fake or real? Uh, these both articles are fake and it takes just a couple of minutes to create these kind of fake contents. For example, in order to create a news article like this, we have different tools available. For example, this is a simple tool to create a fake news content, right? So for example, uh, I can choose any sample. Uh, I don't know, like Trump fails to tweet today, right? And then I can just use, it's October 23, the place is Fredericton. And you can just, you know, I don't know, maybe tomorrow is public holiday and if you want to change the new channel i don't know you can put cbc so i mean 
all of you can see how easy it is to create this fake content, right? Then you have to just take a snapshot of this very news article and you can share it on different you know, media platforms. So same goes to this one, right? Uh, like you can also create a similar piece of news here, like New York Times. If you can see here, it's me, uh, author Saki Pakak. So there are different ways through which you can create this fake content and you know, use different media platforms to, to spread it. Not only this, with the emergence of uh, deep fake uh, technology, I mean, you can see a simple video, right? So here we are using, we are trying to manipulate the the Barack Obama, right? Means through deep fake uh, technology, you can create a fake video of anyone and just you know share it on different platforms. So. Once you have all these tools available, it's really easy to spread this, you know, fake content. How? So if you are a malicious user, you can either, you know, uh, create a bot. So bot is an automated algorithm that can post fake content on your behalf. Or you can simply create a new cyborg, I mean cyborg. So cyborg is basically half human and half, and half uh, robot. So the idea of cyborg is to to uh, make existing bot detection algorithms less effective because here, like sometimes human tries to post the news, sometimes uh, an algorithm tries to post the news. So that makes detection difficult. Anyways, when you have these simple tools, you can you know use these algorithms to post fake content autonomously using different platforms. And with the chat GPT and all, now it, it becomes more easy. For example, if I need to create a fake content and for that I need a bot, I can simply use a chat GPT. So here I was just trying this uh, scenario. So, so here's a simple chat GPT. So I tried to ask a simple question. Can you create a social bot for me? <clears throat> for educational purposes in Python. So I got the message, well, there are you know, some of the steps that I can do in order to create a bot program. But for example, if, if I'm not from CS background, right? I'm from some other area. So I need a real algorithm that I can use to create a bot. So I simply put a query, well, can you please write a program for me, right? So, so write a program and well, definitely it, it provided me lots of steps that I can use to, to uh, create such an algorithm. So I'm putting the query, well, can you please help me to create a bot that can post content autonomously, means without the user input. So here it gave me a, you know, a, a code snippet using TVP library that I can use to post content on, on, on Twitter and so on, right? I mean, the idea is, well, when you have so many tools available, it's really easy for us or for people to create fake content and spread it on, different platforms, whether it's Telegram or it is, you know, uh, Facebook or some other media platforms. Now the question arises, well, what we can do really to, to you know, to uh, reduce its, its, its impact. So the first tool is, I mean, the first thing to, to understand is this is the recent infograph. So on an average, per every 60 seconds, there are approximately 18.2 8 million text messages sent. There are approximately um, uh, 11,000 you know, chats on Microsoft Teams. There's approximately 600K videos that are being viewed on YouTube. There are approximately 300,000 tweets you know, that are being posted. So when you have so much diverse information and also in different formats, detection really becomes difficult. So especially the technical controls, the algorithms that we are trying to develop to, to detect uh, fake content, 
is 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 really hard because your information is diverse. It's in different formats. Sometimes it can it can be in an audio format. Sometimes it can be in a video format. Sometimes it can be in you know uh, image format. So all this thing makes it again a very difficult task. So the first step is really awareness. So this was a um. Like these are some of the eight, these are few eight simple steps uh, that can really help to spot fake news, especially if you are not in like you're not uh, a technical guy. So it's always good to consider the source means from where the news is being you know shared. Also, please do check the date. Sometimes we see old stories and you know like uh, those stories are basically back dated. To, I don't know, maybe you know, five or six years back, and also it's important to check the author. Sometimes, you know, when we see a news, there are some strange names who created that article. For example, Stranger XXX. I don't know, Mister, uh, Mister Arnold. I mean, so on. So these are some of the ways you know that can at least help, or that can at least you know. Uh, uh, make you decide that, that whether this 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 content is, is is fake or not right and also sometimes don't rely on headlines read the whole story what this story is about so once you're aware then we have different tools to to supplement that can help us to decide whether this is a uh, fake or not so we have different tools one is a uh, fact checking websites so fact checking websites are basically the websites that are maintained by domain experts like journalists and so on so they so they manually verify whether a specific uh, piece of news is is fake or not for example if i go to this uh, snoops.com uh, it's still uh, okay One second. Yes, you can see the Snoops, right? So this website do have a fact checks, like, you know, there are different news articles and it provides you some insight whether that specific piece of news was fake or not. For example, this one, did University of Texas revoke scholarship of players who kneeled during Anthem? So this was a story, right? And as per this website, well, they're showing, well, uh, uh, this is a satire. So satire means this content was created by someone just for entertain entertainment purposes. So this is not a uh, real news. Uh, so going back to the presentation. So one way is always to go to the fact-checking websites. Second is we have a reverse image search tool. So sometimes, you know, there is some news or content being spread through images and that's really difficult. But again, there are some tools. Even we have Google reverse image search tools or we have tools like uh, this one. So through this tool, say I have an image uh, on, my, on my computer that I want to verify whether this is really, you know, uh, true or, or not. So, so recently there was this image, uh, you know, being circulated uh, about Trump, like, you know, please arresting him and so on. So if you just go to this, like if you just want to verify this more, so, you know, you can use this tool. So it will tell you, well, basically uh, this was a fake image and they used artificial intelligence to generate this image. And there's one similar image like this where a pope is wearing a white buffer jacket. So this was also AI generated image. So again, this is uh, one more tool that can help, especially if there is some fake content, you know, being uh, put through images. Uh, going back to the presentation, we also have AI based tools. So for example, we have uh, the specific tool available. Yes. So this AI-based tool has different options that helps you to, to at least evaluate whether the content is fake or not. For example, if you have some news content, you can just put it here. 
or check a claim, it will give you some, some ideas whether you know this is a neutral, this is fake, this is real. That also helps a bit. Uh, okay, going back, going back to the presentation. Similarly, we have game-based tools. And like these tools are really amazing. Why? Because these tools help you to, to understand the, the, the fake news content better. So for example, let me show you how this tool works. So the idea of this tool is uh, to think like an attacker. So, I mean, let me give a demo. So, so here, well, it's saying, who are you, right? So it's saying that, well, my job is to guide you. So this tool tells me if you want to become a malicious actor who wants to, you know, create fake information, how it works, like how those people try to gain skills in order to create fake news content. So for example, I'm interested to, to like, I'm interested to, to be a person who wants to create disinformation content and, you know, deceive people. So the first reason it's saying that, well, it seems maybe, you know, I'm frustrated. So if I'm frustrated, you know, I want to do something bad. So maybe I will post a frustrated tweet. So it's saying, well, this government is a complete and utter failure, right? So if I have to create fake content, Maybe, you know, this tweet makes more sense because I'm frustrated. So I just want to do something bad. Well, I will tweet it. Now, as soon as I will tweet it, well, this tool tells me, well, as of now, you have only eight followers and your credibility is very low. Means I have to do something in order to, to make sure that my credibility level is, is more. I have more followers. If I have, if I have more followers, if... I have more credibility score, then that will help me more to spread the disinfo the, the, the fake content that I will create. So now it's telling okay, well, you only have few followers. Uh, what can you do next, right? So it says, well, maybe you should try to raise your credibility, but I'm not sure how. So how? So it will, it will tell me, well, ignore this one. So it will tell me, okay, in order to increase your credibility score, maybe you can create a fake official Twitter account, or maybe you can impersonate someone. So it's easy for a person to create fake accounts, right? So let's create a fake account. So it tells me, okay, now, maybe what if I create a fake account by the name of the president of USA, right? Uh, but if you see like, this is a fake account, why? Because of this uh, weird character N, so it's telling me that say, if you create a fake account by his name, and then you put a tweet like this, as your president, I have issued an executive order to rename Canada, Canada to North North Dakota, right? So if I will tweet it, what will happen? So it seems as soon as I will tweet it, you know, maybe I will get more followers. So as soon as I, as soon as I will tweet it, you can see now, my followers increased from eight to 39. And also my credibility score increased a bit, right? So the reactions will be something like this. Oh my God, is he serious? As has Joy gone completely dash, 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 you know, so on and moving on. So then it's telling me, well, how are you feeling? So, well, I'm feeling good now because I have 74 followers. It looks I am able to manipulate or deceive people. I'm good. So next step, I want to be a pro. I want to be expert in this area. So what can I do? Well, I can maybe create a new website or maybe I can create a blog. So what if I create a new new, new, new website, right? Maybe my website name can be the best words, right? Bursting the mainstream media bubble. So now I have this website, my followers increased, my credibility is increasing. So this is how a fake news person or a person who wants to deceive users based on his or her agenda, you know, they will go on evolving using these tactics to deceive people. So as a non-technical person, if you really play this game, you will have better understanding like how to identify a fake content or how to identify a person 
who is trying to create a fake content. So this game will go on, go on. So uh, we don't have time to play this whole game. Now let me go back to the uh, main presentation. So we also have browser extensions. For example, uh, we have news guard tech. So these are the extensions that you can put in your browser and it can potentially flag whether a content is fake or not. And last but not the least, the government, the government of Canada is, is spending a lot of money in, in this very direction. So if you just go to this, uh, to this uh, platform, online disinformation. So the government the government of Canada has you know like defined what is disinformation, what is misinformation, and, and what you can basically do or you know what are the tools available that you can use to to identify whether a specific content is fake or not. Now let me go back to my screen. So in a nutshell, we can say, uh, if you are not technically strong, you can use awareness as a tool, and also you can supplement awareness with these tools to make sure whether a content is fake or not. Uh, so all these are like all these tools are for non-technical persons as well because you don't need to know you know the, the the algorithms and all. You can simply use these tools to to see whether a fake content is being. Uh, spread or not. Uh, and in this very direction, uh, as of now, I have published several papers on this very domain. And my recent work uh, uh, has been on early detection of fake news. So using this model, we can detect fake news uh, at least under four hours once it's on different platforms available. This model helps to detect fake news under four hours. So this is, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the first work in this very direction uh, that was recently published. So uh, in order to wrap it up, since my time is almost over, if you have questions, please ask me. Or if you're interested to do research with me in this very direction, you can always contact me through sakip.talk at unb.ca. With that, I will say thank you all for listening to me and if you have any questions just let me know thank you uh thank you very much sakib uh any questions from the audience you can type your questions in the q a uh, box or as uh, dr sakib mentioned you can send him email yeah. A, yeah personal email so that he will help you as he can uh, i have a small question sakib uh, might related to more into the law side. How, uh, wh what about the legal side of uh, spreading fake news, uh, things like that? Yeah, there is bill. I think, uh, yeah, uh, Anisi, she will be talking about the bill uh, that is going to be proposed in the parliament. Am I right? Yeah. So that, I mean, the thing is how to identify a person who spreads fake news, right? For example, you know, with different bots available, with different uh, cyborgs, with different technologies. You can always remain autonomous to to spread the fake news. So how we are going to identify a person who is sharing fake news? For example, if I have to share fake content, well, I can create fake fake uh, IDs. Uh, how can you identify me? So yeah, that's if true. you're able to find a person, then maybe that makes sense. But the issue is here the security goal of no repudiation or accountability. How are you going to make a specific person accountable that you are the person who shared the fake news? So you need forensics to prove that. But with the dark web is there, you know, deep deep web is there. Uh, there are several challenges to, to, you know, make someone accountable that, well, you are the person who spreads fake content. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we do have one more question. How do we prevent cyberbullying? How do we prevent cyber bullying? Uh, again, this is a interesting topic to, to work upon, uh, cyber bullying. The thing is, uh, 
again, awareness. If you think someone is, you know, uh, bullying someone, you need to talk, I don't know, uh, to someone close, you know, uh, like this is an issue here because, you know, it, it's like a spam. For example, if you get a spam in your Gmail, there is no one else to help you. Why? Because that spam already bypassed all detection mechanisms. It's in your inbox now. So there is no technical tool that can help you to say, well, how to decide whether it's a spam or not spam. So, and then it's your awareness, it's your consciousness, and it's your education that you have to take a best guess. And maybe, maybe that can only help you. Uh, so from my understanding, I don't think there will be any technical tool. There should be at least awareness and education that can help at least in this very scenario. I hope yeah. I answered the question. It's more psychological. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much, Sakib. And we are running uh, running out of time at the moment. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us with the webinar. And thank you very much, Sakib, for your time and effort.